In this video, we're going to discuss enterprise architecture principles or guidelines and things that we're trying to achieve from our enterprise architecture. In this video, I'm gonna cover the 12 biggest, most common goals of an enterprise architecture. Now, we're gonna begin with the beginning. The first goal of enterprise architecture is actually alignment of uh, the people, the processes, and technology. And we typically call it business alignment and value delivery. But what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to find the most efficient ways for people to do things in our organization. And we're trying to give them the most efficient technologies to enable our employees to do things better, to provide better customer support, improved efficiency, better quality, reduce costs, or whatever the business goals actually are. We typically, from an enterprise architect perspective, are gonna be prioritizing projects and investments that are gonna be delivering the most business value. And it's gonna be a constant dialogue back and forth with various stakeholders to make sure that we're constantly aligning the people, the processes, and the technology. That's the first principle or goal. The next principle or goal of most enterprise architectures is a standardization and a simplification of the systems. We typically want to adopt a common standard, a common framework, a common technology platform. And we're trying to do this to reduce complexity and make things consistent across the enterprise. By doing so, it's going to be easier to manage. We're going to have lower costs and it's going to be easier to change things uh, when these things need to occur. So we're typically going to use uh, industry standards for interoperability and integration. And anytime we can make something simpler, to reduce maintenance costs or overhead or make it easier to do an upgrade, we're interested. So standardization and simplification. Now, when possible in enterprise architectures, we're liking to make things modular and reusable. So in a perfect world, we can design a system component or a system that can be reused across many different applications or business domains, making it easier for us to be more agile and change directions when we need to. And we'll get to that uh, later. Now, if we've got modular architectures and we've got more agility, it's typically a good thing. So often we want to make sure that we can develop more shared services and that can be used for various components of our business to reduce the effort and minimize duplication of efforts. Now, another key principle of enterprise architecture or goal is going to be scalability and flexibility. We want to make sure that that business can scale and do what it needs. So we need to make sure that our architectures are going to be scalable so they can accommodate growth. And we also want to make sure our architectures are flexible enough to adapt to changing business conditions. For example, if we used anything that was too proprietary and now we need to make a change, we may need to change many different systems. So we want to make sure that we design our architecture to be scalable and flexible. So be able to handle increases or decrease in load. For example, we want to add new capabilities easily. So in many cases, it's about how we design our systems. Another goal or principle of enterprise architecture is going to be integration and interoperability. So we want to make it easier for us to integrate systems, whether we're dealing with internal systems or external systems. We want to make it easy to support data exchange when we want and automate processes when we can. So we typically want to think about uh, key APIs or middleware that can facilitate easy and simple integrations. We want to use data formats and protocols that are not proprietary, so it's easy. For example, if we use an Oracle database, even though it's proprietary, we can use it in three different clouds. If we were going to use an AWS DynamoDB, for example, or an AWS Aurora, if we're looking for a relational database, now we can't use that in two or three different clouds and 98% of enterprises are multi-cloud. So think about the interoperability and integration in every architectural decision choice. Security and risk management, very important goals of NT enterprise architecture. We need to make sure that we put controls and risk management systems and processes into the fabric of the entire architecture to protect the organization's people, the organization's key processes, the organization's data, its assets. So we're really talking about security by design, 
Uh, and that can mean anything from secure practices on our network to secure uh, to threat modeling, to secure coding practices. We want to make sure that security is part of all parts of our design. And we should be constantly reviewing uh, and updating security protocols to meet whatever evolving threats actually exist. Then the seventh main principle of uh, enterprise architecture outcomes is that data is a strategic asset. We need to recognize that data is a core asset of the organization and manage the data and making sure that data is accurate, consistent, and accessible when needed. So that typically means we're going to implement uh, data governance frameworks, uh, and we may leverage some analytics tools and business analytics tools to drive insights from the data and potentially AI. The uh, next goal that we're trying to talk about as an enterprise architecture principle is going to be agility and responsiveness. We want to architect the enterprise, the processes in a way that will enable rapid responses to dynamic market conditions. Things change. Interest rates go up. Interest rates go down. A legal regulatory environment changes and there's a new opportunity. Something changes. So we need to make sure that business is agile. So, you know, we might want to think about agile methodologies uh, that we might be using. We may design our systems with modular approaches that can support incremental improvements or rapid prototyping, but we're going to be there to focus on agility. Now, let's face it, cloud computing in many cases provides a whole lot of agility. And even if cloud computing costs more, that agility is one of those things we're typically looking for in enterprise architecture, which is why we still use cloud computing, despite its costs that seem to be way too high or escalating costs, which, but the agility is a big business value. And we may still want to use those systems for those reasons. Cost effectiveness and efficiency. We want to design our systems to optimize IT spending by balancing performance, quality, and cost. So we want to make a cost benefit analysis of everything we do. And that should be based upon the uh, cost of it. For example, what is the cost to buy a server first uh, and run that server total cost of ownership, including power maintenance staff versus running uh, a virtual machines in the cloud and running the space. You may find one cost a lot less than the other. By comparison, you might find some little agile application that benefits in lower cost in the cloud. So the key here is to really figure out what we're doing, optimize our spending, put the right workloads in the right places, balance, cost, quality, and performance based upon the business's needs and designing accordingly. Governance and compliance. Now, that is one of the things we're trying to deal with with any good enterprise architecture, and it's a key enterprise architecture principle. And it'll be on all enterprise architecture frameworks. We need to create a robust governance framework to oversee architectural decisions, make sure architectural decisions are aligned with internal policies, internal needs, internal business, business needs, as well as any external regulations. So we need to define uh, clear roles, responsibilities, and processes for our architectures and architecture reviews and any kind of decision making. We're going to monitor compliance constantly and we'll be adjusting governance practices as necessary, either because regulatory environments change or we need something different for the organization. Innovation and continuous improvement. This is a big tenant of anti enterprise architecture. So we want to foster an environment where new ideas are embraced and we can easily continuously improve things. So part of that is encouraging and experimentation and adopting emerging technologies when they can add value and not using them when they don't add value. So we're going to regular review and update our architectures. We want to incorporate best practices, lessons learned so we can constantly improve things. Now, the last key enterprise architecture principle is to be agnostic about technology. We want to avoid vendor lock-in when possible by selecting solutions that are going to be based on functionality and business needs and compatibility rather than brand preference. We should never have a brand picked out until we actually understand what we need. So no bias when it comes to designing our architectures. So those are the 12 main uh, principles we're typically talking about when we talk about enterprise architecture. You know, it's not an exhaustive list, but that's typically what we're looking at and goals of any enterprise architecture. The long-term viability of the business, improving the organization's efficiency, aligning the organization's people, processes, and technology, breaking down silos between business units, enhancing communication so that at the end of the day, business needs drive technology solutions and we have that alignment with people processes and technology to make sure that organization has a competitive advantage 
If you'd like to become an enterprise architect, a cloud architect, an AI architect, a security architect, or any other kind of architect for that matter, join us for a free architecture webinar. We run one each week. We will go over various architectural roles, the skills that we need in these roles, and what it's going to take to get your first architect job. We'll also spend 60 to 90 minutes live on Zoom, completely free, answering any questions you may have about becoming an architect or your career or other things. So join us on a free webinar. You can register for the webinar as well as get many free things. And the link for the free webinar is in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career, whether that be an enterprise architect, a cloud architect, a security architect, a network architect, or an AI architect. Maybe uh, give me a comment to let me know what you thought of the video, what your goals are, because I'd love to hear from you. So I look forward to seeing you in another free webinar or YouTube video. Take care, everyone.